welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is Brexit is is, is horrific. Um, first of all, it was going to be the end of March. Then they pushed it back. And if Theresa May couldn't get the agreement through our Parliament, we were going to be kicked out on April 12th. If she could get it through, they were going to give us until May the 22nd. So she got prepared to present it again, and the Speaker of the House went, mm -mm -mm. you presented it three times, you've had a no each time, you need to make substantial changes before I'm going to let you present it again. And then I watched Nikki Ravens, let's talk about makeup, and she mentioned that Pinky Rose Cosmetics went out Boozy Shop, which is a Dutch reseller, retailer. And I've been lusting after a particular uh, palette of theirs for mm, quite some time. But the cost of shipping from the US to the UK, then the 20% VAT charge, customs charge that we would get on arrival, and the handling fee, which can be anything from 8 quid up to 14, 15 quid, just made the palette too expensive, I just couldn't justify it. But we were still in the EU at the time, and, and that meant no VAT on arrival, no extra customs charge, cheaper shipping. So, uh, yeah, I, as you know from the thumbnail and the title, I bought the Bright Lights palette. And produced this look with it. And then literally, literally, 24 hours after I placed my order, Brexit got extended to the 31st of October. So I could have waited. I could have not broken my low buy for this month. But I wasn't prepared to risk it. So, yeah, hello, <laughs> latest instalment of Brexit broke my low buy, but I also blame Nikki Raven because I found out about it through her. Um, yeah. Nikki, my YouTube wifey, I blame you. And Brexit. But mainly Brexit. So, if you want to find out exactly how well this palette performs, then you're in exactly the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Now, in the intro, I'll probably just show you the palette. But I want to show you how well the palette was packed. Even with damage to the box, the palette was pristine. Now, I, I kind of blame Nikki Raven and Brexit for this because I watched Nikki's Let's Talk About Makeup and she mentioned that Pinky Rose Cosmetics were now at Boozy Shop and I have lusted after a certain palette of theirs for a very long time but I just couldn't justify buying it because of the uh, shipping cost from America and then the tax and import and customs that I would get on arrival because here we don't just have to pay the customs, which is 20% of whatever the original price was. 20%. That's like a fifth, again, on top of the price. Uh, but we then have to pay a handling fee, which can be anything from 8 quid up to, I think, 14 is the most I've paid. So there was one occasion when a pallet that I bought with the shipping and the import tax came to nearly 100 quid. Yeah, I'm not going to call it that again, but of course while we're still in the EU, boozy shop are Dutch, <clears throat> so yay, no customs on arrival, which means no customs fees and no handling fees, 
and a much, much cheaper shipping cost. <clears throat> Sorry. Hay fever's kicking in already. The thing was, at the time when I watched Nikki's film, Brexit was due to happen April 12th. Uh, which was like two days away. So I thought about it for a bit. And then I was like, it might get pushed back to May the 22nd. Depending on whether Theresa May can get her proposal through Parliament. And then the Speaker said, you can't put the same proposal through a fourth time, you've got to make changes to it. And I'm like, oh no. So, I thought, that's it. The universe, God, whomever, is, is clearly wanting me to break my low buy again. It's amazing the willpower I have for other things, but with makeup, not so much. So, I ordered this. Literally 24 hours later, Brexit got extended to the end of October. So, let's show you how well this was packed. Nice pink box, blue. Then you open the box and you get a little card that says, Hi there, pretty. And then lots of pink tissue paper. So the hi there, pretty on the back says, Do you have a question or need advice with your new makeup? Contact us at the email address or in our chat. We'll be happy to assist you. And it, that's in Dutch first, clearly, and then in, in, in British or English. So, hi there, pretty boozy shop. Thanks, Angela. Kiss. And then, is that Lois? Not, not quite sure. But there is a genuinely handwritten note. How lovely is that? Right, so, opening up the very pretty pink tissue paper. I might keep my little note, actually. There's a beautiful matching pink... Uh, what is this? What is this? I know what material this is. The name escapes me right now. But with a boozy shop written on it. So, let me just uh, dispose of the box for a minute. So, open it up, take it out. Okay, it's covered in bubble wrap. The bubble wrap was sellotape, but obviously I opened it to check it was okay. So, I'm going to be keeping this because this can actually be extremely useful as a bag to wash my um, blending sponges in because although I clean them every week once a month they go into the washing machine for an extra clean and I put them in a one of those net washing bags but I thought oh I now have a spare net washing bag which is awesome so I opened up the first lot of bubble wrap oh okay Second lot of bubble wrap and get the palette the right way up edge. Third lot of bubble wrap. Seriously, boozy shop. Ten out of ten. A star for packaging for this. Really, really spot on. Cannot fault that at all. So bright lights by Pinky Rose. Slide it out of the I don't know whether I'm gonna keep this yet or not. Um, yes, I'm going to have to because it's the only place that has the ingredients on it. So I will have to get hold of that. But here is the Bright Lights palette. You want to see what it looks like inside, don't you? Right, now normally I get rid of these, but this does have pressed glitters in it. So I might keep hold of it initially just to see how messy those glitters get. So are you ready for this? You probably already know exactly what this palette looks like. I mean, it's like it's a new palette. Look at that. That glitter. 
oh, it's like it's it's silver and pink and green and blue and yellow and oh, and it's called cupcake. And then there's a beautiful teal glitter here and a pink glitter down here, and all of these fabulous shades, most of which are matte. This is a satin and this is a satin. The rest of them are all mattes. <laughs> now, I'm not going to use a press glitter today because I do have to go out later and I do have to drive. So when I'm wearing my contact lens for driving, I do not put glitter on my eye because if I get any shedding down and it gets under the edge of my contact lens, it, it, it's not a good place to be. So, I have done swatches of this. God knows how long I've been talking already and I haven't even started. I'm going to put the swatches up while I zoom in. I'll be very up close and personal by the time you come back. Please don't shout and scream. Be frightened. <laughs> right, so going from left to right or wrist to elbow, the top row is a uh, smash cupcake punky brulee pop rocks dreamsicle and boom and the second row is dazzle glitz cloud lit tiki becky and tickle as in tickled pink i love that right hello i'm back again right <clears throat> Just a, a little bit of housekeeping, just while I prep my eyelids. Um, I'm going to use my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot today. Hello? Can we? Can we? Oh, okay, that's about as close as I can get in, is it? Fair dues. Um, my face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. Details of the antiperspirant primer that I use are in the description box below. Um, I use one of these double-ended brushes and you'll see how I apply it while I'm talking to you. Now, <clears throat> there are thousands of makeup channels out there but what I noticed when I was learning was there are not that many that are aimed at beginners. They all assume you're going to know stuff like wet your makeup sponge before you use it and um, you know, this is how you blend and this is why we do you know windscreen wiper blending and this is why we do circular blending <clears throat> and nobody ever really explained it and they'd go super super quick um, and they'd normally do the second eye off camera and they'd speed up blending and they'd cut bits out and you'd be like well hang on a minute I'm an absolute beginner here I haven't got a scoop of what you've just done. Can you see how that really neutralises all the... Because I've got such deep set eyes, I always have dark circles. And I have like these sort of raccoon staining and, and you can see veins very close to the top there. And this soft ochre just completely blocks it out. It's awesome. The reason I only take it halfway up and then blend it out is because it's a yellow based one and I'm a neutral to cool based. So. Uh, otherwise I get like a yellow stripe across the top there. Right, so continuing with my description of the channel. Um, I was determined that if I ever started a makeup channel, um, it would be for all skill levels. So, you know, an absolute bloody expert can watch it and speed my blending up because with chronic pain I can't blend as quickly as a lot of people do so it does take me longer to do my makeup anyway um, but you know if there's a speed widget that YouTube give you please feel free to use it you know I'm not going to know either way I might but I'm not going to be offended if you do um, so people that are expert and can blend quicker than me you know you can skip through my waffling about how to work out whether you've got hooded eyes or deep set eyes and how to follow the tutorial if you've still got hooded lids, etc. 
and you can skip forward to the part where I'm putting colour on and then you can speed me up and my film will probably come down to about the same length as everybody else's films do. However, if you are a beginner, you're safe in the knowledge that you're going to be able to follow every single step and I'm not going to go too quick for you and I'm going to explain why I do things and I'm going to give you tips to make things easier for you um, because that's, that's what I wanted when I was starting to learn properly um, when I got back into makeup in sort of probably 20, 2015 I think was when I really started getting into it after so I got married in 2014 um, and then just my makeup addiction kind of started the next year really. I'm not going to set this with powder um, but I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds to dry down before I start putting pigment on top. So yeah, please don't moan if I'm not going quickly enough for you. Just remember what it was like when you were a beginner, please. Okay? Thank you. Right. I am going to explain now about hooded lids. Now, when I look straight forward and relax my brows, you can see all of my mobile lid. I'm a little bit droopy there today because I'm very tired, but you can still see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I do not have a hooded lid. If your static lid covers part or all of this mobile lid, then you have either a full or a half hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded eyes because we experience the same issues of transfer of shimmers up onto the top lid. Um, we, we can't just do a nice pretty cut crease following the shape of our socket. Um, you know, if, if we're cutting the crease, you have to go much higher up. And even when we use glitter glues, glitters break down something chronic, which is why if I'm driving, I won't use glitters on my eyes. <clears throat> well, at least not on the mobile part of my eye. To show you what I mean, this is the eye that I'm blind in. So if I cover my mobile lid and then close it, you can see I've got as much lid space again, which when my eyes are open, is folded back in. So I do completely understand the issues that people with hooded lids have. The tutorial I'm doing today, you're still going to be able to follow anyway because I'm actually going to be marking out the shape that I want to use above here. But all you need to do to follow my tutorial or anybody's tutorials is with your eyes open, get a flat top brush or a very thin pencil brush or a liner brush <clears throat> and with your eyes open just sketch out where you need your crease to be so you're effectively creating a static lid on uh, or you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid now it will reduce the space between your crease and your brow um, so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than I do uh, and you'll be absolutely fine right enough waffling I want to put some color on my face oh these look beautiful <clears throat> and I am really drawn by these super bright ones because we've actually got a really bright day out there today still a little bit nippy uh, but it's it's bright which is awesome so I'm gonna grab this flat top brush I was just talking about and I'm gonna dip into smash which is the bright neon green. There's a fair amount of kick up in the pan but at least that means you are picking pigment up on the actual brush. So I am going to very lightly sketch out the shape that I want to do today. So the, the first part of the eye I'm following my natural shape but then this side I'm just going to curve it up towards the edge of the brow and then I'm going to raise my brows so I can actually fill that line in. So you can see now that's literally just the bit that you can see 
but then I've got all of this lot and then the same amount on this one that tucks back in so I do completely get it I really do I'm just gonna this is the challenge now <coughs> of getting the shapes to look the same deep joys I also struggle with this lid because um, it got pulled around a lot when I was a child at the ophthalmic hospital and um, you can see it creases and it moves an awful lot more than my other eye does and I have really really deep creasing here which no matter what I do I get gapping in the shadows so I do have to slightly stretch my lid out at that point um, please please don't do that unless you absolutely have to or you will end up with horrible deep creasing like I have got <coughs> and I can assure you folks it only gets worse right I'm going to have a quick slurp of drink to see if I can stop barking at you silicon straw good for the environment right I'm going to go in with a Morphe M321 which is a really nice dense but tapered brush I'm going into that smash and I'm just gently picking up some pigment on the brush look at that now I'm not going to tap off because I don't care if I get full out <coughs> really voice behave I don't care if I get full out because I haven't done my foundation yet so I'm just going to start off wow look at that um, gently tapping along this line that I've done oh wow oh look at that isn't that stunning oh I'm having a moment folks I'm having a real moment this is beautiful oh I'm going to have to try and get some of their other palettes now on other months I'm determined to get back to my low buy rules <clears throat> although I'm adjusting them slightly because I think uh, restricting myself to one palette oh for goodness sake hang on I'm gonna cut this next bit out when I'm clearing my throat Let's continue. Um, yeah, I think going down to just one sort of major purchase a month, so new palette or new foundation, um, I think was it was too strict. And it's like when you go on a too strict diet, you instantly want to break it. Um, so I'm changing my low buy rules slightly. I'm going to let myself buy, still restricting myself to one foundation a month. Um, but I'm going to let myself get up to three palettes, I think. Um, and allow myself to do pre-orders as well. But then the month that that pre-order arrives, I'm going to try not to do the full three palettes. <clears throat> right, so... That's stunning. I'm just going to very, very gently do tiny circular movements all the way along the edge of this green, just to soften it slightly. And then as I come back, so I start off with circular movements like so, and as I come back, kind of push the edge out, if you get my drift on that one. This is such a stunning colour. Ooh. I think I might have got my neon palette, folks. Right, and I'm now going to do exactly the same thing on this eye, where I just gently tap the pigment along. The reason I'm doing it like this and not doing sort of windscreen wipers like I usually do 
is because I'm doing it on a non-set base because I want the colours to have as much pop as possible and to be as bright as possible. Um, and when you use a non-set base, if you try and do circular movements and, and the usual way that I, that I blend things in, you will find that you very often get um, patchiness and gapping because obviously the non-set base sort of grabs it and then doesn't want us to blend it out kind of thing. So I'm just going to check that I've got mm, a little bit of a little bit of striping. So let's just top that up a little bit, just to make sure I've got. Because that striping is a dead giveaway of your age, folks. It really is. <clears throat> right. So again, tiny circular movements just at the edge of. A green. Oh, this is such a pretty colour. I'll go to Morrison's later and do the food shopping with Hubby. Uh, that's going to be fun. Mind you, I think they're quite used to me turning up with uh, goodness only knows what kind of makeup on. Now I'm just going to do the where I'm kind of pushing the colour up. To really fluff that edge out. I do tend to struggle here and here on both eyes because of creasing to get colour to stick so the fact that that has gone gone straight on is amazing um, and as you can see there's a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan uh, but not too much and you can just I don't blow the excess off until I'm done with that colour because you can just go back in and pick some, if you need more pigment, you just pick up the kick up, basically. Right. <laughs> now, I've done a lot of sort of bluey green looks. I think I'm going to go real neon. I'm going to go into Lit, which is that beautiful yellow. Look at that. And I'm going to pop this slightly overlap. Oh, look at that's beautiful. Um, slightly overlapping the edge of the green and straight away blending the two colours together. So we get a nice soft blend between the two. That's lush. Now that's somewhere on a plate that is. Not sure why it's on a plate on my face, but you know what I mean. Wow. Now I'm taking this up much higher than I normally do. Normally I would stop where that green line is there. Uh, but because I think I'm going to do an all matte look today anyway. Um, I don't know, I might put some shimmer on the lid. Um, but I can still pop a bright highlight in there. I don't normally advocate taking colour right the way up because it can be quite ageing, um, particularly if you're only using like monochrome colours, so you know all shades of blue or all shades of pink or all shades of green or whatever. Um, oh, I know who's going to love this look. Elle loves tea. Is going to adore this. She loves green. I'm beginning to see why. This is beautiful. I know a lot of people think you shouldn't wear the same colour as your eyes, because my eyes obviously are green. Uh, but I actually find that if you get the right shades of green, it can actually bring the colour of your eyes out, rather than um, kind of mute them. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that green, just to try and blend this bit here a little bit better. Just want that line a little bit softer between the two. I'm holding the, the brush right at the end, so I'm putting as little pressure on it as possible. Just sort of dragging the yellow onto the green at this point. That's lovely. Right, I'm going to go back into that yellow. And I'm going to do the same thing 
on the other eye. So again, slightly overlapping with the green and instantly blending the two together to get as soft a blend on that edge as possible. Now I have been struggling lately with with my fibro, which is one of the problems that I have, where um, the skin on my face has been very, very tender, particularly sort of the top areas here. So um, I don't like having to blend for too long because it, it feels like I'm rubbing a cheese grater across my skin right now, to be perfectly honest. And that's not the brush's fault. That's, that's, you know, it's just, fibro it's just one of the things I have to deal with um, thankfully it's not like it all the time on my face um, but the fact that this is blending so quickly is an absolute godsend this morning I tell you um, palette I was using the other day oh, wow it felt like my eye was going to be it felt like my eye should have been bleeding the amount of blending I had to do so the fact that this is going so beautifully makes me very happy indeed and is definitely make me lust after all the other bloody palettes now. Great. Right. Now I could cut the crease with um, concealer but there's not really any need because I've already done the shape that I want and it's already got... Um, MAC paint pot on it. So I am going to get a nice flat brush. Now which one am I going to use? That's a very good question. I think I might go for this one. This is my Royal and Lang Nickel Chic Pro. It's actually a concealer brush but it's absolutely great for doing Bits. Actually, it looks like I've got a little bit of green on there. So this has just got um, my cellar water on it, and I can't see what I'm doing. Obviously, blinding one eye. I'm just going to get the green off of there. Yeah, that eye was okay. I'm just going to grab my brush and just. Smooth that base back out while I've taken it off. Again, cannot see what I'm doing right now. Relying on muscle memory. There we go. I'm initially going to try... I'm going to try one of the shimmers. Do I want to do an all matte look or should I try? No, I'm going to try one of the shimmers. I'm going to try Glitz, which is the pale... Um, turquoisey blue. Initially I'm going to try it dry. Um, I'll see how that performs and if necessary I will wet it. So. Oh. Stunning. <laughs> oh, I hope it goes on to my lid that colour. Right, so I'm just going to come right into the corner there. Wow. Alright, uh, you don't need to wet these shimmers, folks. Wow. That is truly a beautiful colour. No, I think I might take that all the way across. I know I'm only using three colours then, but I just, I really love the look. Now, I'm not overly fussed about shaping at the edge here, because what I'll do in a minute, I'll use the micellar water on that pad and tidy that edge up, and I'll show you how I do that in just a, just a couple of seconds. I mean, 
do you do you see that? And do you see how little fallout I've got from using a shimmer dry? I mean, come on. That's bloody amazing. I'm just going to get rid of a little bit of yellow on the inside of my nose that I've just spotted. Now what I do is I fold it over to a fresh bit of the, because obviously that's where I was just, and I go under the lashes and I come up and curve towards my brow. See? And that just gives me a nice, perfect line without having to use tape. Right, I'm now going to do exactly the same thing on this side. But because of this deep creasing, I am going to have to straighten my lid out. Otherwise, shimmers just skim the top and then I get a lot of fallout through the day. Again, do not stretch your lid out like that unless you absolutely have to and you already have deep creasing like I've got, okay? You'll see in a minute when I let go just how deep that creasing is. Right, if you look, that blue comes to there on the brush, from the tip to there. Then when I let go, literally just comes to the end of the bristles. So I've got basically exactly the same amount of skin that's just creased back in again. So, and that was from when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. And I'm two weeks away from being 45. So, please don't pull your eyes around, folks. Do as I say, not as I do, basically. Um, and the creasing didn't really show. Whoa, that was a massive great bumblebee at my outside my window. Oof. I'm allergic, so I have to be very, very careful around them. Thankfully, I've not opened the kitchen window yet this morning, because although it looks lovely, it's still a little bit cold out there. Um, yeah, I, I didn't really start to notice any creasing until I was about... I suppose mid-30s I started to notice that if I was using a pencil liner, this eye was creasing a lot and I was getting like gaps in it. And I just went, oh, it's not a problem, I'll just start using a liquid liner then. So it really wasn't an issue. Um, please excuse my stomach if you just heard it grumble. It has been fed, it had a toasted bagel at five o'clock this morning. And it's now... 11 o'clock, so it's nowhere near time to feed it again. Um, yeah, and then when I was, you know, when I hit 40, I started to see the creasing here. And then I suppose when I hit my mid-40s was when it really got to the, the stage that I, you know, the normal circular blending or, you know, putting it in and gently using the, the brush to sort of move the lid just... It just didn't work anymore, unfortunately. Right, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to fold the micellar pad over a little bit. You can see there's the bit we just did over on the other eye. Again, I always get more fallout on this side as well because where they pulled it around, it's a lot more... Uh, I don't like to use the word loose. Uh, a lot less taut than... <laughs> This side, shall we say. And there you go. You see, that's how you get your lovely straight lines. I like that a lot. Right, now, because I do want... Again, excuse my stomach... Because I do want some glitter on this look, I'm going in with some Winky Wisps. 
No, winks. Wispy winks even. Not even read this morning. And I've got two of their glitter gel liners. As you can see, in like a silver holographic and a stunning green. And I think we both know which one I'm going to use today, don't we? Of course we do. Right. Where's my nice little... Oh, please, stomach, shut up. Right. If you've watched my video, um, the brushes that I recommend, there's a set of um, AliExpress brushes that I recommend. This is one of those. And this is the Bend Eyeliner Brush 10. Okay. This is me gel eyeliner. Look at that. Doesn't that make you think of like Emerald City? And... Ooh. Mm. Right. So I'm going to dip my brush into this. I know what you're thinking. You said you don't put glitter on. Yes, I said I don't put glitter on my mobile lid. However, what I want to do is put a line of glitter where those two colours meet. To really add a bit of pow because you know like it's not bright enough already I do like these I got the um, holographic one first and I was amazed at how because normally you do this and you have to go over it about 12 times to get this sort of glitter payoff and you can see you know I'm this is really packed with glitter straight away you know I'm not having to go over the same line a dozen times to get the depth of glitter that I want um, and I think these pots are only about five quid as well, five, six quid. So, I, uh, I treated myself to the green one as well because, you know, why not? Do you see how pretty that is? Now I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. I can do it a little bit easier because I can actually close my eye this side. But then at least I suppose with me having one eye that I'm blinded and one eye that I'm not, you do get to see two different application methods. So if you have the same issue as me, then you'll see how to deal with it. See again this is the sort of thing that most YouTubers will do either off camera or they'll speed it up or they'll just it'll suddenly appear when they haven't even told you they're doing it off camera. Right now I'm going to have to stretch my lid out again for this bit. This is just stunning though, it really is. I can't get over how beautiful. These colours are. And this company does um, lashes as well. I haven't bought any of those because to be quite honest, I don't really wear lashes that often. Um, 
and I've got quite a lot that I'd bought from eBay. I've got a set of lashes that I bought from um, I think I've got some eyelers that I haven't even used yet. Just seriously, how can you see the difference just adding that little row of glitter has made? Just always make sure you really tightly close this, otherwise you will end up with that gel going dry. And I'm just going to clean my brush off to get all of the glitter and the gel off of it. I just use that micellar pad basically. Just look how stunning that is. Wow. <laughs> Pop my little protective case on which helps keep those bits nice and fine together. Yeah, these really are beautiful. Um, I re and when you order, they send you two little disposable liner brushes as well, which to be honest, if you're careful with them and clean them off, they don't have to be disposable liner brushes. <laughs> you can uh, you can use them many, many, many times. Right, I'm going to pause you now and I'm going to do uh, foundation and everything and I'll come back and finish off the under eyes. So, see you instantly. Hey, as you can see, I chucked a bit of uh, winged liner on because I wanted that double wing effect. I do have a tutorial on how to do winged liner. I will put that in the description box below. Uh, but this was actually trying out something entirely new. Uh, I'm not sure if the film for this will have gone up yet. If it has, I will link it. If not, there's probably going to be a playlist called does it work or is it worth it or make up tricks and gimmicks or something like that. There'll, there'll be a, a playlist with it in basically. Right, so back to the bright lights palette. Uh, and I've got a, this is a slightly looser packed flat top brush. Just a cheap set from eBay. These diamond handles are super in right now. Now I could continue with the colours that I've used here, but I want to be a little bit different. I know, that shocks you. <coughs> Probably doesn't shock anybody at all. Uh, so I'm going to go into... Oh, choices, choices, choices. I'm going to go into Pop Rocks, which is the purple. I know, there's a purple and I didn't use it on my top eye. As you can see, picks colour up lovely. I'm just going to pop this right up tight underneath my lower lash line. Lush. Oh, I get the feeling you're going to be seeing quite a few tutorials with this palette on my channel in the next you know, few weeks. Because, you know, summer is coming, as opposed to winter is coming. He's got blue eyes. I've always had blue eyes. I used to have blue eyes, but they turned to green when I was about five years old. I can't decide what my favourite bit of the opening episode of that series 8 was, whether it was... And if you haven't watched it yet, spoiler alert. I can't decide whether it was the... They've always been blue! Or the look that the dragon gave John over Daenerys' shoulder. I had a cat that used to do that. Or whether it was the if you want a whore buy one if you want a queen earn her <laughs> <clears throat> yes right 
Uh, I've got a flat top brush here, but it's a bit chunkier, so it's great for really smooshing out that lower line. And I think I'm going to pick up Brulee, which is um, like a really lovely soft peachy apricot-y colour as you can see. I did just tap off a little bit with that because I've done my base now I don't want it to go too far down. I'm just going to buff that all the way along just to soften the purple and add a bit of extra interest. Ooh. This palette is lovely. I've been tempted by the Blush Tribe Neon palette, but I've got to be honest. Now I've got this one, I'm not sure I need it. I do want the Blush Tribe Pastel palette though. I think she's gone a bit quiet on that. I think people were complaining she was releasing stuff too quickly. Like, seriously? Oh, by the way, there has been some issues where she's, she's recently changed... Um, internet service website hosting provider type thing technical terms um, and there have been issues where discount codes haven't been working so if you've tried Bomber and it comes up as unrecognised um, just give it another couple of days she's working on it and hopefully it should be sorted um, all the discount codes are listed in my uh, description box and clearly state whether they are affiliated or not the blush tribe one is not um, I only mentioned it because I mentioned the palettes and if you've been trying to use my code and wondering why it wasn't working I just wanted to give you an update right as I said I'm going to keep hold of this plastic sheet in here um, just until I find out how messy those shimmers are going to be the glitters rather are going to be Ooh, I like that. Now, highlight time. <laughs> I am going to grab Jeffrey's Sarcophagus. This is a beautiful, beautiful highlight. If you are, this is probably his most um, accessible highlight in terms of numerous skin tones can use it. Um, it was in the uh, 24 karat um, eyes, uh, highlighter palette that he did which was obviously aimed at deeper skin tones. Now I picked that up because I was intending to use them as like inner corner highlights and brow highlights and because it had one that was similar to Trophy Wife by Fenty and it stopped me from wasting my money on a highlighter that I probably would never have used to be honest. This is just a cheap flat top brush that I got from eBay years ago and I'm just popping some highlight up under the brow. So this is actually designed to work on medium through deep skin tones and I'm actually um, super super fair as you can tell and I'm sort of neutral to cool undertone so it can be really difficult finding a gold or a champagne colour that doesn't when I look forward leave like a cast on the cheekbone um, but this is absolutely perfect it's I think this and Audrey um, from Gerard Cosmetics which I bought before I had my discount code with them before anybody asks um, I bought quite a bit of stuff from Gerard before I had my discount code before I was affiliated with them and I've also bought stuff I get a, an, a, every so often they'll stick a store credit on so that you can buy bits um, usually when they've got new products coming in but even when I haven't got a store credit, I still spend my own money at Gerard because I like their products, basically. Um, but yeah, Audrey by Gerard and this one by Jeffrey are 
probably the only two sort of champagne -y gold highlights that, that genuinely work across a lot of skin tones. Right, okay. I am going to pause you one more time while I stick some more of this over the rest of my face and put some mascara on and I'll be back with, oh and some lippy, and I'll be back with my final thoughts on this palette. Now I'm back, uh, just so you know what I've got on my face, um, foundation number 7 Hydra Luminous in Porcelain, uh, Revolution Conceal and Correct in Peach and Tarte Shape Tape in 8B Porcelain Beige, uh, Butter Bronzer in shade Bronzer and Tarte Exposed Blush. I uh, went over all of that with the Wet n Wild bronzer in Reserve Your Cabana. Use this as like a finishing powder. It gives a similar effect to, um, you know, like the Hourglass Ambient powders. Just kind of softens everything. If you're using a matte foundation, it kind of makes it look more like skin rather than that flat matte look. Um, I told you which. Um, Highlight I was using. Mascara is the Catrice Glamondol Volume Waterproof. Bang on dupe for bad girl bang, but cheaper and waterproof. And the lippy is Huntington Beach from the Thirsty Collection from Jeffrey. So, what do I think of the Bright Lights palette? I know I've only used technically three shades on the top and two at the bottom, but they performed beautifully. Neons are like pastels, very, very difficult to curate, um, especially neon green and neon yellow. They, they tend to go very patchy, you can't really tell the difference between the two colours once they're on your skin. And you can see here there's a definitive difference between the yellow and the green. Um, the I love the fact that there are only two shimmers in there and that the majority of this palette is matte. Um, obviously I need to try this out using the, um, the pressed glitters but I'm going to have to do it on a day when I'm not having to go out and drive because obviously I don't know yet how well those glitters will adhere uh, and I'm not prepared to risk getting into a car accident just to find out. Um, so far this is getting a definite thumbs up from me. Uh, there will be future tutorials using it and uh, no doubt you will end up with a far more rounded view of this by the end of all of those. Um, I also really, really liked um, the Wispy Winks gel liners, or liner that I used. Um, I think it's just a really lovely uh, finish to the look. I think it's great. I really, really like this. So, I hope you have liked this, and I hope that, you know, maybe this will inspire you if you've got this put it back out again, you know, it's it's spring, summer's on the way, we're going to get warmer weather, we're going to get beach parties, we're going to get barbecues, we're going to have fun, I'm going to melt in the sun with my fibro, yeah, let's not think about that right now, and if you haven't got this, maybe have a look and see what you have got in your collection, can you dupe this out, do you have single shadows that match, do you have a different neon palette? Let me know in the description what you think. Right, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people. My numbers go up and down quicker than a yo-yo in a nine-year-old boy's hands. And have you seen how quick a nine-year-old can yo-yo? Mm. Mm -mm. I only say that because uh, my godson, when he was nine, was a beast with a yo-yo. <laughs> However, I'm not discriminating against girls that yo-yo, or older people that yo-yo. 
which makes you think of the Spinner's song. Now I'm showing my age and I'm going to shut up. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is yours today. Fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.